Tonight, a lesson in what not to do if you're a parent with a beef against the principal of your kid's school. Don't become a keyboard warrior and spray hurtful adjectives on social media. But if you do, be prepared to be sued. On Friday, a Queensland judge found some parents who'd posted online about the principal of the Tambourine Mountain High School south of Brisbane had slandered her and were ordered to pay damages. But despite the ruling of the court, as you'll see, this case, which is about to enter its fifth year, is so full of bitterness and belligerence, not even the class dunce would think it's over. Late one night in March 2016, an online discussion is circulating among past and present parents of Tambourine Mountain High School about the school's popular principal, Tracy Brose. But in the wee hours, some parents are using the chance to settle old scores. I wrote that she's nothing but an evil, nasty, horrible person. I remember the night that I wrote it. It was 1.30 in the morning. I'd had a couple of bourbons. There were some horrendous comments on there, like really, really bad ones. So and I thought, oh, bugger it, I'll have a go to. The posts were aimed to hurt, and they did. If you're going to physically assault someone and the weapon is a knife, that's very serious. Mm. The problem is the weapon these days is social media and that's the weapon they have used to hurt me. So began, with a few keystrokes, a battle between the principal... She's out for revenge on anybody that speaks out against her. ..and the parents that would last four years. Don't push the little people around. That's me, you don't push little people around. Some would be destroyed financially. We've lost everything for this woman's hurt feelings. Our lives have gone down the bloody toilet. We've got nothing. Oh, hey, oh, hey. For others, it would come down to physical assault. I said, open the door and talk to me, I'll open the door for you. Where does it become OK? This is my castle. This is where my children feel safe to sleep every night. And this person came and did this to my home. It's a story of obsession, absurdity and some very bad decisions. We wouldn't accept that people can come into a school and punch a teacher to make a teacher do what they want. So why do we accept that people can assault and bully and abuse online? In March 2016, Tracy Brose, the longtime principal of Queensland's Tambourine Mountain High School, was briefly suspended on full pay. The complaint, kept confidential as is standard practice, was unproven and she was reinstated two months later. But in that time, the school's PNC committee launched an online petition campaigning against her suspension. Parents were invited to comment and there was an overwhelmingly positive response. But there were also a number of parents who decided to use the petition as a forum of attack. And that was their first mistake. Well, our experience with Tracy Burroughs, um, it wasn't a pleasant one at all. Hey, look at oh, look, there you go. Donna and Miguel Beluscus were online that night. They decided their time had come. What did you write online, Donna? Um, I wrote that she's nothing but an evil, nasty, horrible person and she brought so much pain and suffering to our family and many others. What she did to our son was evil. The supposed evil Tracy Brose did was to expel Donna's son Harrison for inappropriate behaviour on the school bus. He's made a silly, immature comment once off never happened before and it's never happened since. And the thing is too, he was egged on by his friends to say that comment and he just said it. So what did Tracy Bryce call your son? She called him a sexual predator. The comments that the parents said I made about their child absolutely did not make those comments. Did you call their son a sexual predator? Not, not at all. Not at all. Why would they say that? Sometimes when you're talking to people and you're um, you, describing a situation, um, so if you say to them you, your child was involved in a physical incident at the school, their behaviour could be seen as bullying, this is unacceptable, um, the parent can walk away and go, you called my child a bully. Tracy says parents of misbehaving children 
often hear what they think they hear. But Miguel is adamant he heard sexual predator. And Miguel, as you'll discover in this story, is often adamant. We have not made one single thing up. So is it your word against hers? Which I don't think so, because we were both present in that meeting that day. But Principal Tracy had her own witness at the meeting, her deputy principal, who was swiftly put in his place by Miguel. The deputy principal, he went to say something. I looked at him in the eyes and I said, you, just shut up, stand in that corner and look out the window. I'm here to talk to the head, not the ass. What did you write? I wrote that she's a liar, a manipulator, gets off on belittling people, is responsible for every failure at the school and is not an educator. In the early hours of that same morning, another parent, Trudy Arnold, also went online to have a crack at Tracy Brose. It was 1.30 in the morning. I'd had a couple of bourbons and I was scrolling through my news feed on Facebook and this Support Tracy Bros page came through. There were some horrendous comments on there, like really, really bad ones. Someone wanted her dead. Some called her dreadful names. Horrible. Um, so and I thought, oh, bugger it, I'll have a go too. Trudy always believed Tracy Bros had ignored her daughter Madison in favour of brighter students. But Madison had left the school two years before Facebook finally gave Trudy the chance to get even with the principal. If you'd read comments like that made about you, how would you feel? If I was the principal of a high school, I'd take it in my stride, really. Part and parcel of the job, isn't it? You know, you've got to cop the good with the bad. She's not just the principal of a school, she's a human too. Oh, of course and she should probably treat other people like they're humans as well and then she might get the same respect back. If you're not happy with a decision I make or my actions, you have every right to complain to my supervisor. You have every right to have my actions and my decisions scrutinised. But you don't have a right to go online and write nasty things about me and to destroy my reputation. Late that night, as the small group of ex-parents hijack the online discussion, Tracy is finally alerted. The first I knew of it was when my little brother and sister actually started sending me screenshots um, of what had actually happened, and I was devastated. I just sat and sobbed hysterically. People said, I'm a monster, I'm a bully. The very thing I stand against and I protect children from, I am now. And why would you trust your children with me? Do you regret making those comments? No. They're what happened to us and what we think. Mm -hmm. She was bullying us and intimidating us and talking down at us. And she made it quite clear that our son wasn't welcome at her school. The words were strong. They were words meant to hurt. There was no other purpose other than to hurt me. Was there any part of you that thought, no, this is nonsense, this, this isn't true, this isn't how I can conduct my life, my education. Does it matter what I think if my 15-year-old daughter reads them, my elderly father reads them, my neighbours read them? There is no truth meter on social media. That's the problem. I don't get, I don't have a voice. I don't get to defend myself and say, what you're writing isn't true. The parents had fired the first shots but they were about to wake up to the fight of their lives. Tracy Brose decided enough was enough. What would you say to people out there who would look at this and just sort of say, toughen up? Yeah. Everyone cops abuse. You're a principal. You should be immune to this kind of abuse. Toughen up. Yeah, yeah. If I just toughen up and go, yeah, it's OK, then that becomes the norm. What they did was horrendous, absolutely horrendous. Why worry about something that's not true? Why worry? It's not going to ruin your reputation, is it? If, if you know it's not true, everyone else is going to know it's not true, so who cares? Tracy instructed a lawyer to give the trolling parents a simple choice. Apologise or be sued for defamation. Of the original parents who posted negative comments, most apologised. But a core group refused, including Trudy Arnold, 
seemingly oblivious to the war she'd helped start. Writing those comments at 1.30 in the morning, was that a silly thing to do? In hindsight, quite possibly. But, you know, I'm an honest person. I'd probably do it again anyway. I think it's pathetic and I think it's ridiculous for a woman her age. Hurt feelings. She's a principal of a high school, for God's sake, and has been for bloody over 10 years. At that point, there is no option. What you've done is against the law and you need to take these comments down and you need to retract them and you need to apologise. As for Donna and Miguel, not only was there no apology, at one point, Miguel sent Tracy's lawyer a reply that was, well, adamant. I basically told him to shove his offer up his ass. The situation was quickly spiralling out of their control. But Miguel and Donna were not about to surrender. She's out for revengeance on anybody that speaks out against her. And that's all we did. We're parents that made complaints, and now she's out to get us. She's picking the low fruit in the tree to stop anybody from saying anything. Do you think she'll win? Don't care if she wins or not. Coming up... You can't mediate with a tyrant. War wounds. I've just lost my house, my car. I have nothing left to lose. But still no retreat. Please just apologise, let's all walk away. So the battlefield... You have to lose a battle to win a war. Their whole purpose of being there was to humiliate me. Moves to a court. Bring it on. That's next on 60 Minutes. This is our last three and a half years of our lives. Um, every night, every day, every weekend, this is what our lives have become, the pain, stress and suffering. Donna and Miguel Beluscus are bankrupt. They've spent so much on legal fees, their lawyer now owns their house. That was our last resort. We started to incur cost after cost after cost and borrowing more money off mum and dad all the time. All this paperwork is their attempt to represent themselves in a losing legal battle against the principal of their son's old school. Look, I've just done the best that I can do. After paying lawyers to do our defences and they kept getting struck out, I said to Miguel, I can't keep borrowing money anymore. I'm going to have to try and do it myself. It's all because late one night in 2016, they let their fingers do the talking. Brought so much pain and suffering to our family. Facebook was their weapon against Principal Tracy Brose. She's not an investigator, she's not a judge. It was an online parent-teacher night that spilled into a real-life war. She's nothing but an evil, nasty, horrible person. This whole process over the last three and a half years actually confirms to me that she is an evil, nasty, horrible person. So you stand by those words? I do, yes. You can't mediate with a tyrant. I need to stand up and I need to say, this is not okay. You cannot treat people like this. You need to be accountable if you're gonna do that online. Tracy Brose, who's been principal of Tambourine Mountain High School for nearly 20 years, is suing four parents who she says bullied her online with abusive posts and who will not say sorry. Trudy Arnold is one. Liar, a manipulator. What I said, I meant, I won't retract it, I won't take it back, and I don't, really don't believe that anything that any of us said made any difference to that woman whatsoever. The final parent sued by Tracy Brose is Laura Lawson, who posted that the principal had made her children's lives a nightmare. Have you apologised for what you wrote? No. Will you apologise? No. Other parents have made apologies. Yes, they have. That, that's up to them, if that's what they wanted to do. And that is fine, but those apologies came with money. After three and a half years with no apologies and no backdowns, the case of the principal versus the parents finally got to court, here on the Gold Coast in October last year. By that stage, the four parents involved were either bankrupt or pretty much financially ruined. They'd lost homes and savings and spent hundreds of thousands of dollars in legal fees. 
got nothing to lose. I've just lost my house, my car. I've lost everything, all my assets. They're all gone. There's not a cent that I have for her. What else can you get from me? We've got nothing. I don't own a home. Other defendants have lost their homes. Life has gone. I don't have a life anymore. I've existed for three and a half years because of some stupid woman's hurt feelings. I have nothing left to lose. So why not keep fighting? And so they fight on. I felt gutted. I just want to say, you know, look, please just apologise. Let's all walk away. It doesn't have to be like this. And when you watch people saying, you know, I've lost my home because of this, none of the sale of any home has come to me. They've lost their home trying to make bad decisions to defend statements they put online. For the Beluskases, Laura Lawson and Trudy Arnold, the case is no longer about winning or losing. It's about trying to convince a judge and the public following it in the tabloid media that they are the victims and Tracy Brose the bully. And I walk in there with a big smile on my face thinking, exposure time, lady, you're going to get exposed. <laughs> Thank you very much. Because at the end of all this, we have not created any of this mess. Mm. She... Her friends, her lawyers have. I'm like, bring it on. A landmark defamation trial is underway at Southport Court. In court, it swiftly became clear that this would be a landmark case on several fronts. Taking the witness stand, the principal appearing visibly distressed. For Principal Tracy Brose and her supporters, a line in the sand by teachers against what they perceive to be bullying parents. For the parents, it was a chance to humiliate the woman they say has ruined them. It was a circus, an absolute circus. Their whole purpose of being there was to do as much damage to me as they could possibly do in the courtroom. You have to lose a battle to win a war. That's the way it's always been. Yeah. They, they might think they're winning the battle or whatever, but you know what, at the end of the day, this exposure that we've done yeah. is going to open up the can of worms that's going to win the war against yeah. people like her. Taking on the parents has also cost Principal Tracy Brose and her husband Peter dearly. They've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars defending her reputation. Other parents originally included in her lawsuit have apologised and some pay damages to cover her costs. And damages are certainly part of her court case against Donna, Miguel, Trudy and Laura. We know, of course, the judge may rule in your favour but not award damages. Yeah. Where would that leave you? I have no expectation on the judge to award damages. The reality is there is no money coming our way. There's been lots and lots of media around, this is all a money grab and everything like that. And there's certainly no money coming our way. What I need from the judge is for her to say, you cannot do this anymore. You cannot continue to ruin Tracy's reputation. You cannot bully her and you must stop because I need these people to stop. Why? Why? because the behaviour has become so extreme that I am now unsafe. Coming up... Open up! Open the door and talk to me, I'll open the door for you. Completely out of control. This is my castle and this person came and did this to my home. But after years of fury... That's Miguel reaching breaking point. Absolutely. Here comes the judge. Four years of fighting, we have just lost everything. That's next on 60 Minutes. May 21st, 2018. Late night at the home of Tambourine Mountain High School principal Tracy Brose. She, her husband Peter, and their three children are watching TV. But outside, someone is watching them. One of the parents she's suing for posting online comments she believes defamed her, Miguel Beluskas. All my life I've been pushed around by people, and as I've gotten older, I've realised, hang on a second, the only way to stop this is to push back. Stop it! I've got my children here, mate. 
The next minute, just a huge bang and the, you know, the bolts flew out the top there and I've gone like, holy, what's going on? Stop it. Miguel goes berserk. Inside, there's sheer terror. The children lock themselves in a cupboard. Once you're told many, many, many times that our young children were in here, you need to stop. Miguel's frenzied attack lasts 25 minutes. But is that acceptable to smash somebody's door in like that? That's you know what? flying into their lounge room. Yeah, that's, that's, you know what? What I did there is what I said I was going to do and what I said I was going to do from the very, very beginning. What was going through your mind when you kicked in the door and the glass caved in? It's really simple, Sarah. I said, open the door and talk to me, I'll open the door for you. Miguel was convicted of unlawful damage, but both he and Donna are unrepentant. Did you know her children were at home as well? Did she know that my children live in my house as well? I know She's been intimidating in us and our family for many years. So that's Miguel reaching breaking point? That, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, that's three years in the making. I've got a knife here. What had begun one night in 2016 as a few disgruntled parents trolling Tracy Brose online had finally turned violent. How can you justify going around to someone's house in the middle of the night, smashing the doors down, terrifying their kids and not leaving until you're threatened with a knife? Like, how do you get to that point? And why would you get to that point? <laughs> This is my castle. This is where my children feel safe to sleep every night. And this person came and did this to my home. And the purpose for doing it was to discourage me from this legal action. These documents have been modified to It's the eve of the decision. Donna and Miguel will soon know if the judge has believed anything they've said, including their latest wild claim that the whole case is a conspiracy against them. We have just lost everything. Four years of fighting false claims, false allegations. Lost the house, lost the car, lost the caravan, had been sent bankrupt by this bitch who has sent us down a trail of false claims. Friday morning, after four long years of what has surely been the most bitter parent-teacher battle in Australian history, there will be a verdict. I don't need money, I don't need damages. I need her to say this isn't okay and it needs to stop. Because if she doesn't say it needs to stop, what then? Next week, they get back online and write more stuff. They're bashing at your door again. What happens to educators if we can't feel safe doing our jobs? It's the final showdown between Principal Tracy Brose And Miguel, Donna, Laura Lawson and Trudy Arnold. A few keystrokes late one night have cost nearly a million dollars in legal fees and damages. Now, inside this courtroom, it's Judgment Day. <laughs> Minutes later, it's over. The defamation claims against Trudy and Laura are dismissed. But Donna and Miguel are found to have defamed Tracy. The judge rejecting their defences and gagging them from repeating some of their allegations against her. You know what? I hurt people's feelings every day. Do you see me getting sued every day? No. Till the law changes, this is going to happen every day, every day change. of the year. The judge also criticised Principal Tracy Brose, saying at times her memory was selective. But she sees the gag order against the Beluscuses as her victory. When you have people come to your home and beat down your front door to try and intimidate you and to bully you, then the reality is at some point you have to say enough's enough, you can't do that to us anymore. In terms of the pain, money and the judge's mixed decision in this extraordinary case, Perhaps there are no winners. But in the end, Tracy Brose feels vindicated as the principal who stood by her principles. I decided that I couldn't live with myself if I actually just accepted that it's okay to treat teachers that way. It's not 
if the attention on this case saves one teacher going through what I have gone through, then it's all been worth it. You can't disrespect people and you can't abuse people. You need to be accountable if you're going to do that online. Hello, I'm Sarah Arbo. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.